I'm sure almost everyone in this room, I'd be surprised if there's anybody buddy that doesn't know the name Argex Titanium. So I won't have to dwell too much on what the company does. Um, we've been here for a while, and we have Argex in just about every account in our office. Personally, and the company, and the LP, and uh, I think I even bought some for my mother, Roy. Um, Argex is uh, long past the point of having too many doubters about the technology. And in summary, what it does is take uneconomic piles of titanium dioxide waste rock and turns them into high margin assets and that's due to the efficiency of the technology. So I don't hear anybody really questioning the technology anymore. And as you know, TiO2 is what replaced lead and paint in the 70s and it's in cosmetics and food and where I will talk more about that. You know about PPG, which is the parent of Pittsburgh Paint and um, the uh, agreements that have been signed with, with Argex. And behind the scenes, PPG has been working very, very close shoulder to shoulder with Argex for several years now. And you're aware of the fact that PPG has taken um, or made a commitment to about a quarter of the production from the first module. And then there's Helm, the large German conglomerate, which is taking about 25,000 of the first 50,000 ton module. And I could go on and on and on. And Argex expect 80 to 100 million in cash flow from that first module. but. Everything now is about how you're going to pay for it. And we've been waiting on that for a while. And how are you going to access several hundred million dollars in debt or project financing? What is the equity component? What will the numbers be so that people can start to do evaluation about the future? Because again, I don't hear anybody doubting the company. Uh, the fact that it will be revolutionary, it's just a number situation now and how quickly can this company move forward. So 137 million shares issued, the market cap is around 85 million dollars. Uh, Roy Bunnell, the CEO, is going to be speaking to you in a minute. Uh, he and the CFO, Glenn Kale, uh, unfortunately cannot stay for dinner because I've been informed this afternoon that they have to get to the airport, they're flying to New York, and they won't tell me why. Uh, Sophie Caesar, uh, who's the manager of corporate communications, will be representing the company. And uh, so you can hit on poor Sophie for all the information she won't give you tonight. And with that, I'd like to introduce CEO Roy Bunnell. Uh, thank you, uh, Grant. I'd like to welcome the uh, Howard Group uh, to Montreal. So, uh, Argex uh, Titanium is focused on the production of titanium dioxide. Uh, when we started this, very few investors that we spoke to actually knew what TiO2 was. Now, um, I think just about everybody does. It's a ubiquitous substance. It's in paint, it's in cosmetics, it's in plastics, it's everywhere. It's what makes paint white, it's what makes it opaque. It is actually the uh, light reflecting off the particles of TiO2 in the paint that masks whatever you're painting over. So it is probably the world's most important pigment, and it's about 20% of the cost of a can of paint. Argex uh, is one now, I think I can say this, after the TiO2 World Summit of a couple of weeks ago. And uh, seeing other people's presentations and providing slides over the last weeks for the uh, TZMI uh, conference in Shanghai, I think I can uh, safely say that uh, the Argex technology is one of only three recognized technologies for making TiO2. The first is the sulfate process, which has been around for over 100 years. The second is the chloride process that was developed by DuPont in the mid to late 1940s. And then over 60 years later, uh, a new technology, and that's our solvent extraction process. I want to spend a little bit of time on this slide, do a little bit of high school chemistry, and walk through each one of those processes with you. The sulfate process 
which is done at high temperatures and high pressure, produces one ton of TiO2. And for every ton of TiO2, you have seven tons of spent acid that you have to get rid of. Normally, that's done by making gypsum, which you try to sell into the uh, construction market. Back in the 1990s here in Montreal, we had two producers of TiO2 using the sulfate method, Tioxide and um, Kronos, and they had the distinction of being the number one and number two polluters of the St. Lawrence Seaway. The chloride process, which uh, is uh, DuPont's process, which is the leading company uh, in the industry, for every ton of uh, TiO2 that they make with their pet coke, which is nice this time of year because it tends to warm the earth. It uh, is about 110% the carbon footprint of, uh, of coal. For every ton of TiO2 they make, they have a ferrous chloride that carries away with it whatever other contaminants might be in the, uh, in the ore, whether it's radioactive or otherwise. Um, it's traditionally been sold into the water treatment market, but that's becoming less and less frequent. Uh, it's dirty HCl and also metal chlorides, which it uh, buries in, uh, in deep wells. The RGX process is different. We do solvent extraction. And for every ton of TiO2 we produce, we produce two and a half tons of ferric chloride, which was described to us by the uh, second largest distributor of uh, ferric chloride for uh, potable water treatment in, uh, in North America last week as the cleanest ferric chloride they have ever tested in their careers, as well as 0.4 tons of distilled water. We have never really promoted this as much as we probably should on the basis of uh, the environmental aspects of this uh, process. We've always focused on the, uh, on the bottom line because not only is it the cleanest process, we believe, of the three, but it is also by far the cheapest. On uh, the average price in the uh, industry right now for producing a ton of TiO2 is roughly $2,500 to $3,000 a ton. With our process, net of byproducts, it's uh, less than $1,000 a ton. So this is the process, roughly in a very um, simplified schematic. All of the equipment is off-the-shelf equipment. Uh, solvent extraction is a proven technology for other minerals. Uh, if you go to uh, Saskatchewan, uh, you'll see the uh, uranium extraction plants out there. It's used in copper nickel laterites. We also do it at uh, low temperature. The highest um, temperature we have in our solvent extraction circuit is around 80 degrees Celsius. As a result, we do it at atmospheric pressure. Um, this is uh, important because it makes it uh, a lot e easier uh, uh, to scale up when you're not uh, trying to build gigantic ovens with both high temperatures and high pressures. This is another comparison. I talked about this uh, a little bit, but it gives you an, uh, an idea of how we compare so favorably to uh, the other processes that are available. Even in terms of the, our principal product, we actually uh, compare most favorably to the chloride process, which is the Western world's uh, favorite process. Sulfate is almost, uh, is almost uniquely used uh, by the Chinese, in the sense the Chinese, I should say, almost uniquely use uh, sulfate. One of the challenges with sulfate is getting all of the iron out of the ore, so it tends to be more yellow. As Grant mentioned, uh, we've signed an offtake agreement with the largest paint company in the world, the largest volume purchaser of titanium dioxide in the world, PPG, out of Pittsburgh. And PPG is also tremendously uh, focused on technology for its uh, paint. Most people don't actually think of paint as technology, but it, it is surprising how much uh, technology goes into the chemistry. And uh, we've been working in them in partnership not only to make sure that our TiO2 meets all of the specs required for use in PPG paint, uh, but that uh, we'll be using a PPG coating uh, to ensure that our, our, our uh, pro product uh, can be used not just by PPG, but by any paint company. 
We also signed this summer an agreement with the third largest chemical distributor in the world, Halm AG out of Germany. This was for 25,000 tons per year for seven years. With TiO2 selling in North America for $3,400 a ton, those two offtake agreements are worth roughly $1 billion. The total addressable market is uh, $16 billion, or roughly 5.2 million tons. Our first plant, which as I've said is now roughly sold out, is only going to be producing 50,000 tons, or roughly less than 1% of the world market. We will be a uh, price taker. We don't expect to have any effect on price. We expect to just sit back and enjoy those very large margins. As you can see outside of China, there is roughly five or six companies that are, represent 80% of the non-Chinese market. Of those, Huntsman and Sockleben are merging. That leaves only five, and it's likely that we'll see a merger between two of the others in which the oligopoly gets reduced to only four companies. As you can appreciate, when you're a uh, paint company and a strategic raw material such as TiO2, uh, rest in the hands of an oligopoly. You want to encourage as much as possible the uh, production by other companies of this crucial raw material. TiO2 is very uh, closely linked, and TiO2 demand is very closely li linked to the world economy. Uh, it's almost uh, a linear relationship with uh, GDP growth. Here in the Western world, we use about eight pounds per person per year. In uh, India and China, they use uh, roughly two pounds per person per year, but as there's many more people and their GDP is much higher, that demand uh, is growing at a much higher rate. This is what we've done over the last couple of years. We've uh, focused on really a very crucial step, I think, which Grant mentioned, which is the financing of that first 50,000 ton facility. And this is essentially uh, where we are at the moment. Obviously, everyone is excited about, uh, about when uh, the, uh, the announcement will come. Every time I uh, agree to give a speech, they always ask me, am I going to announce it? The fact of the matter is that we're at, I would say, the very uh, uh, latter stages of uh, the diligence. Uh, as Grant rightly pointed out at his introduction uh, to the conference, the markets are rough out there right now. Uh, the, uh, the investors are more uh, cautious and careful than they've been. Uh, diligence has been more um, intense than, uh, than one would normally see. But uh, although it's been an exhausting and uh, long process, it is also a value-added process for the company to uh, think twice with, I think, some very uh, intelligent people, both from the uh, engineering industry, but also from the TIO2 industry, which I think makes our company better uh, in the long term for everyone. Our first plant will be uh, in Valley Field. Valley Field is a unique situation. We're next to a port. We're next to a natural gas line. We're next to a CSX and a CN, a rail hub. We're next to uh, two uh, major highways, the uh, 30 and the, and the 40. We're uh, 30 minutes from the Montreal airport. And we're really in the hub of a uh, chemical center where you have sea zinc, you've got a hydrochloric acid plant, uh, you've got a, uh, a, a station that is uh, focused on producing uh, uh, chemical technicians. It's really a great uh, place to be in Quebec and have as your uh, first, uh, first facility. I think also for, and I, I don't mention this too much uh, in our speeches, but I, I think we've got a really excellent core team of executives for building this out. I've uh, been really impressed over this whole diligence period with what a great job everybody's done. I'm, uh, I'm uh, really confident about uh, what a great team we've managed to put together, including our board of directors, uh, led by our chairman, Robert Guilbeault, who is the, the uh, former president and CEO of, uh, of Alouette Aluminum, the uh, fifth largest aluminum smelter in the world. In terms of stock price, we're down close to our 50 a two week low. We've had all uh, warrants issued. You know, back in the start of 2011, before I uh, became president, we had 59 million warrants outstanding in our company. I'm happy today to tell you that number has been reduced to zero. All warrants retired, either expired or were exercised 
because they were in the money when they, were, uh, when they expired. Insiders hold about 25% uh, of our company. If you look at this chart where we are, I think that it's sort of self-explanatory in terms of once uh, production financing is uh, announced, uh, typically what happens in the company's uh, stock. Don't need to spend too much time on that today. And we also have very good coverage by analysts both uh, south of the border, such as Jeffries and Credit Suisse, by uh, European, uh, by Cander Fitzgerald, for example, in, in London, as well as a host uh, here in Canada. Those are the highlights. I think I've touched on them all, but that's uh, essentially the uh, RJEC story. Thank you.